have also sound houses where we practice and demonstrate all sounds in their generation. We have harmony with the key of love of the sound and the best of sounds. And most instruments of music, likewise, to hear and be known, so we speak of the head of the earth, with balance the ears of the head of the earth. Construction is um, maybe the culmination of uh, many different things that I've been um, thinking about over the last few years, and it forms the, the final part of a series of eight pieces, and all together they go under the title of Resistance and Vision. The words resistance and vision encapsulate I suppose what, what, I, what I think of in terms of the relationship between music and the social environment in which it takes place and what the possibilities of that are. By resistance, I mean an idea of resisting the tendency which we see around us towards superficiality and short attention spans. And on the other hand, the vision um, is, in my mind at least, a vision of how, how the world could be different. <laughs> I started off from the idea of the differences which we see all around us between the idealized utopian ideas of society which have um, popped up um, over the past few thousand years starting with Plato's Republic and going through the Middle Ages and the word utopia itself. And the, the difference between that, uh, that kind of vision and the society that people actually live in, which is not organized um, in that sort of um, perfect and harmonious way. <laughs> And so the form of this piece proceeds by a series of confrontations between what I think of as um, different ideals of musical organization and, if you like, the flip side of that. flip side is represented by a series of scenes from the Trojan Women, which is a um, tragedy by Euripides. In that play, 
the women of Troy, the royal women of Troy, are outside the walls of the city which is being burned behind them and they're about to be um, sold into slavery or taken away to, uh, to Greece into slavery while their husbands and children have been murdered by the invading Greeks. That, in its time, was an act of resistance and vision by Euripides, because, of course, the Greeks thought of themselves as the civilizing factor in, in the world of their time. So Euripides was pointing out that that civilization, which was seen by his compatriots as being um, some kind of ideal um, was nevertheless not without its dark side. I've always felt a, a, a strong attraction to Greek tragedy, the sound of the language, for instance, the way the language is organized, and, and um, what is generally called the musicality of it. It contains within itself pitches and rhythms, for instance, ancient Greek being a tonal language, which then um, can form part of the material that a, that a composer works with. Like in its own time, the Greek tragic text is not just a string of words, not just a string of um, expressive words, I should say, but it also contains within itself a kind of music which, which I suppose I'm in, uh, intending to interpret through um, my own musical resources, 21st century resources. The Greek tragedy strand, which runs through the piece, is one of four different strands, in fact. Um, and the other three are largely represented by instrumental music. The second one, for example, is a series of um, movements which features the violin as a solo instrument. In five different ways, there are five different solos for the violin. In five different ways, there are um, a kind of musical lament. I think somehow the violin is associated with particularly intense emotional states.
I was first contacted by the Elysian Ensemble in um, 1989 and started working with them the following year. So this is a relationship that now goes back over 20 years. Um, and during that time, their development as a group of musicians and my development as a composer have been very much intertwined. And I think I've written about half of the music that I've written during that time for this group or for various members of it. In the meantime, we've also been working together on developing some of the improvisation techniques around the compositional ideas that um, form part of the piece, and at the same time, developing the sound projection system, which is also an important part of the performance. We have um, 16 speakers surrounding the audience above as well as on, on their own level. It should be clear, I hope, that um, the reason for doing that is not just to use state-of-the-art sound effects or anything like that, but actually it's part of being able to resolve, as a listener, the complexity of this music. It gives a very different impression, obviously, if you are surrounded by those sounds you are able to take your own pathway through, through listening to those perspectives. I see the sound production system as being um, very much part of the way the music was conceived. <laughs> situations where the music might be performed where the performers would be in the center of the space and the audience would be surrounding them and the speakers surrounding the audience. Yeah. You can't be too specific about how a system like that works but um, for me the main function of it is um, to, to become part of the orchestration so to speak. Being a child of the 20th century, um, I've always thought to myself that, in fact, there's, there's no such thing as an unmusical sound. That's my starting point. And from that, from that blank slate, then it's possible to imagine any sound at all having um, some kind of expressive meaning, some kind of expressive significance which will communicate itself, which will resonate in the listener's mind. modes of musical communication, what I'm interested in is creating within, within the music itself a context for these sounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
within itself. It creates and evolves a whole musical world. conclusion if we can um, because at a certain point the notated music stops and then from then until the end it's up to us as a kind of microcosm of society to find a way of resolving that that situation that we find ourselves in Obviously, that is going to change from one performance to the next, because I would like every performance, obviously, to be to be different, to go more deeply into the concepts that, that it's dealing with. And also to, to grow into our minds and hands and fingers as musicians. is ever finished of course. While on the one hand this is the present day culmination of, of, of a lot of work that the ensemble and I have done together, we're already talking about what our next plan is. And, and also in terms of performing this music, um, I'd rather see it as a beginning than an ending because it's part of an ongoing um, collaboration with the musicians. Every performance will be different. 